so yeah, I beat Darkest Dungeon, but I added a uh, a few mods. Really, the hardest thing about adding all these mods is getting them all to work together. You'll notice there's already something different. <laughs> My, bro, what's different? The green torch? Why is the torch green? <laughs> <laughs> it's a green torch. I mean, honestly, with the amount of mods you've added, it could just be a bug. Uh, you know, that's entirely possible. <laughs> Oh, nope, there it goes. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my God, there's so many things. Do you have a green torch mod installed? No. Uh, okay, well, then it's, it's not the green torch mod. <laughs> you know, honestly, I got to be honest with you. Darkest Dungeon crashed so hard, I have no connection to Steam anymore. So, I mean, I don't know what the fuck. The green torch was the Vermintide mod, by the way. I wanted that one. And honestly, the, the beginnings of these are always the same. Yep. Always the same. So I did a test run of this a while back with about 50 mods total, mostly class mods. So I do already have a good idea what some of these classes do. I've also put a lot of nerf patches to overpowered classes. I want this to really feel difficult. There's a ghost here. I don't remember there being a ghost here. And then you get absolutely shredded in the tutorial. What the fuck? Blood Moon difficulty, by the way. And we start off in the Hamlet getting a Yama class named Stanley. And in the stagecoach, we pick up a humanoid candle. Welcome to Modded Darkest Dungeon. The Hamlet itself, I didn't change too much. Uh, there wasn't a lot besides... Hey. Can... Can I help you? Hi, I'm Neo. I'm an artificial angel specifically created to take over this world. Uh-huh, yeah. So, if you're supposed to be like an angel, where's where's your halo? You couldn't figure out how to attach it to my head and blender, dumbass. It's hard, okay? Listen, I'm actually here to warn you. Yeah. About the future. The future. Yep, that's the plot. Yes, so. <clears throat> In the age of ancients, the world was unformed, shrouded. This is just the Dark Souls intro. Honestly, I'm gonna try to give every single modded class a fair chance. There's 76 of them. And I did my best to try and play them all. The Hamlet itself just has a few anime girl skins over top the usual people running the services. I did have the quest screen changed to accommodate the additional areas, but I had to change it later for, uh, reasons. To await the end of the world, this is your fate. I, I, I really don't get this bit. The first one goes about as smoothly as you would expect. Nothing of note really happens. Uh, the Illuminator and Stanley do pretty okay, but it's hard to judge them until we really get into it. Yeah, I'm gonna spoil this right now. Stanley was too powerful even for OBS, so I'm gonna reenact what happens here. Rats, we're rats, we're the rats. We pray at night, we stalk at night, we're the rats. I'm the giant rat that makes all of the rules. Let's see what, what kind of troll we dipped ourselves into. And then we dipped out of there because honestly, we didn't deserve to be alive at that point and dismissed the Yama way too strong. And now we're gonna do a bit of a jump ahead in time because let's be honest, everybody's seen the Darkest Dungeon intro so many times and it's definitely not because Stanley ruined the rest of the recording for the beginning. Fuck Stanley. Didn't you want to warn me about something, by the way? <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Uh, okay, so get this. There's a modded content boss, right? Right, you won't beat it. That, that's it? You, you don't get it. This thing fucks. Like, capital F. Like, you're gonna want to complete the game before you even try to figure out how to beat her. Or you're, you're definitely gonna hit the dead mark. But I increased the death limit to 48. And I don't even have a weak limit because of the... Uh, it, it'll be fine. Now, if you look closely, you'll see the issue with this different quest screen layout. Yeah, I, I turned that off for the next recording session or two. But another few quests down, and here's really the beginnings of the A-Team. So this is, this is just something that worked really well in the first test run. Basically, you have an Elysis with three different supports, and at least one of them just needs to do a restoration of some kind. These buff the Elysis or debuff the enemies, and she just straight murders. Honestly, this setup is really scary against something like the Mimic, because if it happens to take the Elysis, we're 
screwed. You have to pay attention while running this setup as well, because one wrong move and your Elysis is toast. Thankfully, the Mimic takes the Hexer, who I've kitted with no damage dealing abilities. So this fight's a walk in the park. <laughs> Darkest dungeon, baby. Imagine this situation. Mimic crit bleeds the Vestal, causes an affliction, refuses the first heal, gets stunned so she can't heal herself, refuses the second heal, resists the lure, but then dies to the bleed anyway. You can't write this shit. <laughs> well, it's okay. I got a trinket that seems pretty good. Those three are my A team for a very long time. Another semi-uneventful quest, learning a few of the other class mods, and we're moving right along to kill the first Warren's boss. This is also where I learned that when the Elysis is afflicted, it gains a permanent repost. Holy shit. Which immediately bites me in the ass because she insta-kills the little pig first. And if you don't know, killing the little pig first makes the big one spam a big damage move that hits the entire group every single time it goes. But with enough bleed stacking, we kill it before it comes an issue. After that quick W, I figured it'd be a good time to start messing with the DLCs, starting with the Crimson Court. Mostly because I am running Crimson Court Plus, Colors of Madness Plus, and Darkest Plus. So right after these quests, I'm going to have access to the Ruins, the Warrens, the Weald, the Cove, the Sunward Isles, the Mountain, Crimson Court Plus, and Farmstead Plus. There's a lot of options. And honestly, we're gonna need it. See, this video was originally supposed to be 200 mods. Uh, that won't fly. Because it turns out that there's a limit to the amount of trinkets you can actually have in the game at one time. According to Kaze, you can have about 1,876 trinkets added to the game before it just crashes on startup. Actually, I want to specifically talk about Kaze later, but for now, let's count how many fucking misses that this land dweller can get. I counted 11 dodges. The accuracy wasn't awful on some of those either. Like, you, you use different attacks too. I saw a couple misses with over 80% accuracy. Yeah, and seven of those dodges were like, in a row. Fuck the land dweller. I'm never touching that shit again. Okay, time to see what's in these mod content dungeons. Let's go ahead and take a look at the mountain first. There's a bunch of really good looking custom monsters here with their own attacks. Things like the Yeti, there's this ruin thing that does defensive things to help its team and for humans we have these tribal guys who look pretty cool but they really just kind of seem like a reskin of the ruins cultists the curio is kind of like the wards with the ritualistic stuff all over the place a lot of it seems kind of generic though it's a but it's a cool reskin for a lot of stuff what what the fuck that's okay, I'll just quit to the main menu and reload into my favorite dungeon. String error dungeon underscore name underscore mountain underscore. Honestly, I need to talk about my load time. I have Darkest Dungeon on M.2 SSD, and if you don't know what that is, that basically means it should load really fast. This is the current load time for my save. And mind you, it only gets worse the further into the playthrough I get. It takes just about two minutes. Normally, it would take about five to ten seconds. Great stuff. And sometimes, bad decisions are made.
Yeah, don't use a warm stone on the ritual thing if you aren't ready, by the way. You did get some pretty good rewards, though. The Starry Night Trinket was super ultra rare. Probably. But the more red warm stone looking thing, that, that cures frostbite. By the way, the mountain has a mechanic like Crimson Court where people can get infected with frostbite. Yeah, and honestly, that really just made me never want to ever go back to the mountain. That that mechanic's so annoying. If you ever interact with the mountain, I hope you're ready to continue to interact with the mountain. And this is the turning point when I learned it's okay to take an L in Darkest Dungeon. And I'm rewarded for it in my stagecoach. I'm given my absolute favorite class mod, the stars. Everything about this class I love. The aesthetic, the trinkets, the abilities, the mechanics. She's so good. You're about to start seeing a trend appearing here. Kaze mods. Inevitably, the A-team just turns all into Kaze mods. And it's not because they're OP. They're just the most interesting and interactive, each with their own unique mechanics and gimmicks. There is only one mod author I have ever followed on Steam, and that is Kaze. If I was to recommend any of these mods that you should try in Darkest Dungeon, Kaze mods. Try out Kaze mods. With a generous sprinkle of nerf patches. Fuck you, bitch. The star specifically is really good in dark teams. That is, no torch runs for maximum loot. So, it was time to assemble the semblance of a team that can excel in darkness. And it was disappointingly easy. Honestly, it's really the point where my trinkets themselves can make even a level 0 character as strong as a level 4 or 5 character. However, all it would take to lose characters is a fuck up from yours truly or some classic Darkest Dungeon RNG. Or just being shit at the game. Shut up! Stupid necromancers and princess goddamn bullshit killing a bunch of characters. I'm trying to learn. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Little bitch. Alrighty, listen, we've just killed the first necromancer boss, and this is this is already the longest script I've ever written. So I think it's time for a bot killing montage, baby. Let's go.
Hello. We are much farther along in the game now. Much has changed since you've been gone. The Hamlet has transformed into cute anime girl heaven. We have a squad at level 6. Don't ask about the Elysis that was in there. A dizzying blow to body and brain. The victory. <sighs> what the fuck? God, I hate this piece of shit game. But as you can see, we're starting to get higher tier missions and the wandering bosses, but we still haven't looked at Farmstead Plus. So while he's trying to get another Elysis up to speed, let's check it. Visually, it's amazing. The portals between zones is just absolutely incredible. Enemies are, as expected, either generic enemies or Farmstead specific stuff. And thank goodness that they decided to play the best Farmstead song in the fights. The curios themselves are good too, usually it's just taken right out of the colors of Madness DLC and repurposed. Farmstead Plus is incredible for gaining crystals without suffering through the eternal boss rush mode that really is just absolutely draining to do over time. I'm okay. You know, Darkest Dungeon just really knows how to get to you sometimes. Let's just do a medium runes run that's pretty easy. Honestly, I want to get this Lilith's Resolve level up to potential user in a higher level dungeon. Oh, fuck. So glad that I'm trying out the Occultist rework for the first time in this run. <laughs> it's okay. We got very good quest locations and there's only a few fights that he could potentially be in. I just need God damn it. It's fine. We'll be fine as long as he picks the sepulcher. He picked the sepulcher. We're good. I think because of the sepulcher's unique death doors mechanic, he's actually been bugged and he's actually just going to be able to infinitely sit on that stake. So this is actually pretty possible. All right, I'll keep going. This game, man, it really just grinds away at you over time. Ah, uh, yes, thank, thank you for that. Okay, let's break out the Sepulcher real quick and we'll dip from this fight with minimal losses. I can still finish this quest. Wow, he was, he was really just getting started with you, huh? To add insult to injury, it was actually just easier to go around him and finish the quest with just two characters. <laughs> Darkest dungeon, baby. I am killing the Baron now.
And it's done with no casualties. That's just what I needed for my own mental sanity. And after attempting a dark run and getting absolutely shredded by RNG and here be monsters once more. There is an incredible opportunity in the stagecoach. A Salt Hunter has decided to arrive. From a previous run, I know that a Saw Hunter pairs wonderfully with the Elysis due to the bonus damage to bleeding targets. And where the Elysis can shred groups, the Saw Hunter can assist in executing larger targets. We can indeed complete a Cove boss with a Librarian for bonus resolve XP to try and boost the both of them to a higher resolve level. And we have an attempt at finding the thing from the stars. This is not the thing from the stars. You will now perish. This boss was actually easier than some of the normal enemies. The first guy hooks the Elysis and applies stress to her, but when she becomes rapturous, she gains a perma repose, so. And now I think it's going to go swimmingly. It's time for the A team to form and do the first Darkest Dungeon quest. Yeah, and because of the manner, there's actually a prologue quest, the actual Darkest Dungeon main quest line. And doing this quest actually triggers the Darkest Plus mod to start. The manner itself is kind of an in-between area with some unique cultists that are not quite as powerful as the one in the Darkest, but still stronger than most of the other things. The boss itself is really cool, takes up all four positions, it's actually quite strong. Does a lot of stress damage, but simply stacking bleeds on each portion of it and focus stress healing with everyone in the back does the trick. So after a quick run to kill the first siren boss. I moved on to the first real Darkest Dungeon quest. Alright, some of you have just been waiting for this moment. I'm finally going to do something with the Sunward Isles. Nothing against the mod itself. There just hasn't been a trinket there yet for any of the classes that I'm currently using. And honestly, I have to give it to the creators. The Sunward Isles is visually fantastic and all the yokai monsters look really good. And I especially like their attack animations. What I didn't know is that something I did in the Sunward Isles quest that triggered all the yokai to attack the hamlet. So now I'm doing this massive wave defense like the farmer said, except with significantly stronger yokai. It took about 20 minutes to get through everything to start the boss fight itself at the end. 
The fight itself was actually decently easy. He acts kind of like the collector, but he spawns yokai instead of the ghosts of dead characters. And then a special mission in the Sunward Isles shows up. And, well... Am I, am I the bad guy? After that light existential crisis, uh, it's time to gather crystals. There's some really good trinkets in that nomad wagon, and there's an achievement for getting 300 kills in one run of the farmstead, so let's get it. Darkest Dungeon at 278? Really? That took three and a half hours! Swine Prince 2. He's dead. Thing from the stars. Dead. Hag. Dead. Necromancer. Dead. Prophet. Dead. The Flesh. Dead. And 328 kills. There it is. Now I have a question for you, buddy. Yeah, what's up? If you could change your fate, would you? Wait, that's that blue hedgehog again of all places. Wait. What? Listen. Your journey to actually doing this bus, that's going to be an entire video in and of itself. You can't do it now. You'll try at least once, but it may as well be an entire another playthrough in order to cultivate a team to actually defeat Nyx. Is that the hut of Baba Yaga? Yeah, you didn't hear that. Anyway, I want to see what happens when I kill Nyx, so let's just take out her A-team. She only has 120 HP, so it shouldn't be too hard to get a musketeer shot before she leaves.
I'm alive. Yeah, so the death count's getting pretty high. Remember, I am playing on Blood Moon. Now, it's it's been increased to 48 total deaths allowed, but we're really at the precipice of that. Uh, I'll be showing the graveyard at the end to uh, Memento Mori. But for now, we beat Darkest Dungeon. Obviously, I will not be able to defeat Nyx with my current death count restriction, and I'll need a lot of time to make the perfect team to actually defeat her and maybe remove a couple of nerf patches. Whoa, wait. They can drop Starry Night Trinkets? Using Darkest Plus might be the way to get these awesome trinkets? God, I just love the design of these monsters in the Darkest Dungeon. They are absolutely horrifying. The whole aesthetic of the Darkest Dungeon really is just incredible. Honestly, thank you creators of Darkest Plus for letting me be able to do more in here. But this mission was honestly super dull. It's just a use quest item on quest location mission. But the wolf showed up and, well, you know. Okay, finding the beacon. Let's hope it's quick. That's just a beholder from Dungeons and Dragons. You can't fool me, Darkest Dungeon. Hey, we got it. It only took 20 minutes. Thank God I was prepared to spend like an hour in here. Okay, big warning. This is the actual end of the game, not mod content. If you ever intend to actually play Darkest Dungeon in any capacity, please skip to this timestamp. Because we are not done after this just yet. I'm from the future, remember? Ready? Okay, here it is. The end of Darkest Dungeon. In all my terrible researches, what I sought was a glimpse behind the veil, a crumb of cosmic truth. I found it here, and in that moment of brain-blasting realization, I ceased to be a man, and became a herald, an avatar of the crawling chaos. Life feeds on life. In your petty pursuit of family redemption, you consume those who rally to your cause, and in so doing, you strengthen the thing, accelerating the end. This is as it should be. It is why you are here. chained here forever, you and I, at the end of the world. Free yourself, rouse the thing, and embrace the ineffable cosmic hideousness that lives within us all. Alrighty, time to kill my ancestor. Alrighty, time to kill my big ancestor. Hey, 
And he just fucked up by proccing raptures for me. Thank you, my good sir. And he is slain by the repost from Rapturous. I love this stupid character, man. Alrighty, time to kill a giant sentient harp. I'm gonna try to do the thing where you stack a massive damage at the end of this thing's health bar so it carries over the hard darkness to try and minimize the amount of characters that I'm actually forced to lose. The Musketeer did the perfect crit to set herself up for another massive slam the next time she goes. But of course, the Alice's crit in the exact moment I need her to not. All right, the first come unto your maker. Sorry, Saw Hunter, you served me really well whenever I used you, but there are more important characters on this team. And I've immediately realized that I have screwed myself. The Musketeer can only do the big damage thing in position three and four. And even at the end of it all, I am still a damn idiot. Yep. Okay, well, I value the Musketeer over the Kitsune Miko, honestly, so, uh, sorry. I, like, just picked up this Kitsune Miko up, like, four quests ago, so I don't feel too bad about this. And, uh, yeah. Fuck you, Heart of Darkness. Victory. A hollow and ridiculous notion. We are born of this thing, made from it, and we will be returned to it in time. The great family of man, a profusion of errant flesh, multiplying, swarming, living, dying, until the stars align in their inexorable formation, and what sleeps is roused once more to hatch from this fragile shell of earth and rock and bring our inescapable end so seek solace in a manner befitting your lineage and take up your mugatory vigil haunted forever by that sickening prose echoing through the infinite blackness of space and time Has come to our family but we're not done yet the manor mod basically has another ending so the game is not considered completed until I do that so let's get to it and here he is the cultist arch priest Yeah, okay, kind of anticlimactic, but he's really just like a stronger collector that summons Darkest Dungeon Cultists this time instead of Yokai or whatever. You can't see it, but it says that an error occurred and the cutscene for the end of the manor cannot be played. Scuffed all the way through to the end. Now, while we're going over the graveyard, I want to thank everybody who watched this video to the end. I know I didn't technically finish the Crimson Cord, and Nyx is still a massive challenge for myself, but this is already the length of a fucking movie. I've been working on making this video for five months now, and it, it's been a hell of a ride. If you want to see more videos like this, longer form, more thought out through the whole thing, leave a like. It tells me that this is what you guys really want to see more of, and honestly, I'm Kind of just throwing different content formats on, at the wall to see what sticks. Whether or not this video actually does well, I do fully intend on beating Nyx. That's going to take a hell of a lot of work, though. And there's also other games I would love to absolutely mod the shit out of and beat them. If not in this video format, then in another. And lastly, a big thanks to all the Darkest Dungeon mod creators who keep making more and more stuff for this game. Even while I was making this video, some crazy stuff has been released. Black Reliquary is still in texting. Hell, the Witcher class was just added as a mod as I'm writing the end of the script. You guys are still making crazy stuff even after all the mod showcases have ended. And I hope some of you will actually work 
on Darkest Dungeon 2 whenever that game actually gets finished. And I'll see you later.